Defining your population and sampling strategy. Population. When you are conducting research, a population can be made up of anything you want to study, countries, organizations, texts, plants, animals, and so on. However, in social sciences, population most often refers to a group of people. Will you focus on people from a specific demographic, a specific region, or a specific background? Are you interested in people with a certain job or medical condition, or people who use a specific product? All the things are people that possess the characteristics in which you are interested make up your population. Remember that the more precisely you define your population, the easier it will be to gather a representative sample. For example, let us say we are studying seniors over 65 who are at risk of falling. There are millions of seniors over 65. In the world who are at risk of falling. Your target population is this entire group that you want to draw conclusions about. But clearly, it would not be feasible to collect data from them all. It would be extremely hard to recruit every senior over 65 years in the world who is at risk of falling. Some people may live in a different country altogether. Some seniors may decline to be recruited for the study. So, what is the next best thing? You decide to limit your study to your country and your area of residence. So, your accessible or available population are the seniors at the community day care centers, near your area of residence. Sample. You must select some of the population to carry out your research. The sample you select should be representative of the population of interest. So how do you select a sample from your accessible or available population? To select a sample, there are two main approaches. 1. Probability sampling. 2. Non-probability sampling. Probability sampling. The sample is selected using random methods. Non-probability sampling. The sample is selected in a non-random way. Probability sampling is mainly used in quantitative research. Non-probability sampling is almost always used in qualitative research but it can also be used in quantitative research. The sampling method you use affects how confidently you can generalize your results to the population as a whole. Let us take a closer look at these two approaches. Probability sampling helps ensure that your sample is representative and unbiased. With this type of sample, you can use statistics to draw strong conclusions about the whole population. There are various methods of probability sampling. Probability sampling methods, simple random sample, systematic sample, stratified random sample, cluster sample. Simple random sampling, this is the purest form of probability sampling. With this technique a list of the population is compiled, or you can use a table of random numbers. The determined number of persons to be included in the sample is randomly selected. Systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is usually more appropriate when large populations are involved, and complete lists of the members are available. With this technique, the first member of the sample is randomly chosen from a numbered population list. Then starting at that point every nth object or person is selected. For example, your numbered list has 800 names. You determine a sample size of 260 would be adequate for your research. To determine the value of n, you would divide 800 by 260. This gives you a result of 3. Therefore, you are going to take every third member of the population from the starting point. Stratified random sampling. Sometimes a population may include several subgroups that you the researcher want to have adequately represented in your sample. Stratified random sampling involves dividing the population into its component groups, or strata and randomly selecting a sample from each group to be included in the research. Cluster sampling. In cluster sampling, groups are randomly selected for the sample. All the members in the groups possess similar characteristics. A cluster may be a classroom, or a school or a group of schools in a district. Cluster sampling is appropriate when the population is extremely large, when no list of the members of the population exists or when the population is scattered over a wide geographic area. Non-probability sampling methods. 
convenience sampling, purposive sampling, snowball sampling, quota sampling. Convenience sampling. In convenience sampling, you choose a sample based on the most convenient and accessible members of the population. For example, in the study the subjects were first-year psychology students at the researcher's university. For practical reasons, many studies end up relying on convenience samples, but it's important to be aware of the limitations and carefully consider potential biases. You should always make an effort to gather a sample that's as representative as possible of the population. Purposive, purposeful, sampling. Some research projects require specific participants. You may select specific individuals because they possess some characteristics that you wish to study. For example, you are interested in studying the experiences and views of people living with diabetes. Purposive sampling is especially useful to researchers engaging in qualitative research for which textual data from a fairly small sample is needed. Snowball sampling. Snowball sampling calls for the researcher to identify and obtain the cooperation of at least one participant with the characteristics of interest. After collecting data from that participant, the researcher asks that participant to identify and seek the cooperation of someone else with the same characteristics. This is repeated until the researcher has enough data for his, her purpose. Snowball sampling is appropriate when the research involves sensitive issues, such as those related to drugs, gang activity, violence and crime. Quota sampling. This sampling technique is very common in marketing research. The researcher decides on categories of people needed for the research and the desirable numbers. Then the researcher finds a way of meeting such people, knocking on doors after 5 p.m., and so on, until the numbers or quotas are met. Voluntary response sampling. If you rely on volunteers for your study, your sample might differ in systematic ways from the population as a whole. For example, high academic achievers might be more likely to volunteer to take part in an online teaching study than students in general. In this case the results would be biased towards students who tend to already have higher grades. When sampling may not be relevant, in some types of qualitative design sampling may not be relevant. For example, in an ethnography or a case study, your aim is to deeply understand a specific context, not to generalize to a population. Instead of sampling, you may simply aim to collect as much data as possible about the context you are studying. In these types of design, you still have to 1. Carefully consider your choice of case or community. 2. Justify why the case is suitable for answering the research question. Once you have defined your population and you have an idea of how you'll select your sample, it's time to decide on the method you'll use to collect data. Follow these tips and you will competently define your population and sampling strategy. If you liked this video, then hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.